let's talk about it's it's the combination. Mm-hmm. All right, there's two moves that they made in, in sequence that just didn't make sense to me, uh, or or at least I thought were was a terrible move. And it was first signing Zach Moss at a two year eight million dollar deal, which I thought was a solid signing for them. You know, as a running back two to Joe Mixon, like great like you're gonna you're gonna have a really solid running attack this year with those two guys you know maybe take some pressure off of your struggling offensive line Mm. uh by running the football more what do they do no (laughs) you know what they did they said gosh zach moss oh gosh we got our savior let's trade joe mixon and they traded Joe Mixon to the Texans. Yep. An congratulations, AFC CJ. Rival. Like, congratulations. congratulations. You just made an AFC team stronger. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. what are you doing? And what an already doing? on the rise. But I love it. I love already it. on the rise, Houston Texans. And you give them. Uh, they've uh, had a great offseason so far, in my opinion. Yeah. Getting Daniel Hunter, dude. Daniel Hunter is an insane an insane move. I love that for them. Hate it for us. Uh, but Derek, those two moves in sequence, Zach Moss and, uh, oh my God, Joe Mixon, uh, you know, in and out. What are your thoughts on, on yeah. those two moves? So it, it, a couple of things here. First of all, before we even get into this, I just want to mention them losing DJ Reader real fast. That's a disaster. That is an absolute disaster and nightmare for them because you're now in an AFC North with Nick Chubb, with Derrick Henry, with the two Steelers backs. Like, boy, not having DJ Reader in the middle is going to be a nightmare for them. I Cincinnati fans, yikes. Um, but nevertheless, yeah, they, they go out and they sign Zach Moss and – You know, he's fine. Like, the Browns were in talks with him, but they didn't want to pay it. Like, he's a fine running back, right? For his price, okay. You know, what? it is what it is. But is he a starting running back? Mm, No. Um, Now, I know the Bengals and Bengals fans are real big fans of the rookie they got last year. I want to say his name's Chase Brown. I could be wrong. Um, And he was fine for them. He was fine for them, but at the same time, like, Joe Mixon, I know they've kind of been done with him, but, dude, Joe Mixon's still a really good running back in the NFL, and to give him to the Houston Texans is crazy. Like, you give Joe Mixon to a team that's already on the rise, um, you know, who kind of needed some help in the run game. They had Dove and Singletary last year. Joe Mixon is an upgrade from Singletary, in my opinion. And the Bengals' plan of replacement is Zach Moss. So, I'm not going to spend all day on this. I'm just going to say this. Huge mistake. I think it's a huge mistake. Because I I can't see them getting anybody else. I think those are the two guys that they roll with. So, I yeah, don't know. No. Dude. I think you're, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, I... I, I just think that the, the the replacement of Joe Mixon, I feel like he didn't get appreciated enough. Not necessarily by the fans, by the play caller. You know, like, I felt like late in games when, you know, or, or middle of games and such, like, they just would not hand him the football. And, like, for me, when I look at that, I just... I, that gives me like just a bad like you know mm-hmm. when Samaj P Ryan was there like they gave him a lot of touches and, and Mixon didn't get the bulk of the workload or I should say he got the bulk of the workload but he probably should have gotten more I, I view Mixon as probably about middle of the pack starting running back right where he's mm-hmm. still very good uh, and he can be a really good weapon for you uh, while he's not necessarily one of the elite guys, he's still very good, and he deserves that respect. And I feel like I feel like he didn't get that from the play calling, play caller in Cincy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean Zach Moss. Like I wanted us to bring him in as the running back too, because uh, he played really well in that role last year in Indy. But he mm-hmm. also sat behind Jonathan Taylor in a fantastic offensive line. 
this is not the same situation for him. Um, you know, m maybe they are going to try to have him as the backup to, to the rookie that you mentioned. Um, you know, and who knows, maybe they, they know something that we don't. And that guy, that rookie is ready to burst onto the scene and be amazing. Who knows? But all I'm saying is it's a huge risk that I feel like they didn't need to take. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, but let's stay on Cincy. Uh, I've got, let's see. I, I think I've got two more moves I want to talk about. And then, you know what? Let's talk about the one that isn't necessarily a move. They did franchise T Higgins and he did request a trade. Mm -hmm. um, Derek, like obviously us as Browns fans, we can be happy about that because mm -hmm. T Higgins, we've talked about it. He is a player that we want it. Um, mm -hmm. he's a very, very, very good wide receiver mm -hmm. too. And he has wide receiver one qualities. And I think he is a, a wide receiver one, uh, for at least a team in the NFL. Eric, I guess, number one, do you have any inkling of where T Higgins is going to go or should go? And the second thing is what is that impact going to, uh, how, how is that impact going to be felt by the Bengals? Yeah, I think he is going to end up being traded. I think it makes the most sense. Um, as far as landing spots go, there's a few obvious ones. I mean, the Texans would be insane if they could land T. Higgins in Houston. Um, as far as teams that should be doing everything they can to get him, New England is an obvious one. New England was interested in Calvin Ridley, and he ended up signing a crazy deal with the Titans. Um, so New England should be a spot, another sneaky spot that I think would be fascinating, especially given who they're probably going to land in the draft. Arizona would be a team that should call about T Higgins. Um, you know, you get Kyler Murray with T Higgins and Marvin Harrison Jr. That would be, yeah. Oh. And they lost Marquise Brown. So, you know, yeah. there's a, there's a guy gone. They lost Rondale Moore, which dude, oh my gosh, there's so much talk to talk about, about it. but talk about it. Dumb trade. Yeah. Oh, my God. For me, that was dumb, at least, I should say. But, yeah, yeah keep going. Keep going. I mean, I, not to go off on a tangent because we have so much we got to talk about, but I think maybe it's just Kyler's health. They want to back up. But, um, yeah, so you look at Arizona, it's like, hey, you lost Rondale Moore. You lost Marquise Brown. Draft Marvin Harrison Jr. Trade for T. Higgins. And then maybe even draft another receiver, like one of these – speed guys later on who you like like a jermaine burton or somebody like that who you can maybe grab like early third round right and could come in and be a wide receiver three for you like that would be great but um you know where he should go absolutely new england absolutely if i'm the patriots i am i'm saying hey what do you want like what what do you want we are desperate at receiver or here's another one new york giants are pretty damn desperate at receiver that would be an interesting spot. But, yeah, I think T. Higgins is gone. I think there's no way. And, by the way, not to bring this up, to, to bring this conversation up for an hour, but you're not getting Justin Jefferson. It, it's not happening. So, just end the dream. Don't talk yourselves into it. Don't hype it up. It's not happening. So, And, and I promise that dude does not know – his girlfriend does not know Joe Burrow's girlfriend who works at a Kroger. Yeah. That yeah. is not what's happening here. Okay. So Twitter, stop it. Bengals mm. Twitter, stop. Okay. You're not getting Justin Jefferson. Um, if you end up doing it, I'll, you know, I'll gladly like say I was wrong and how it's an amazing move. Right. But it's not happening. It's not. It's a happen. point. It's a point zero 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 one percent chance like yeah you think you're not gonna pay t higgins and you're gonna pay jefferson and chase yeah. like that's your entire that's... team if you do that <laughs> like that's not happening yeah. I, I don't see uh mike brown bankrolling that at all no or i believe it's mike brown i can't remember his name i think yeah who knows uh <laughs> <laughs> uh let's talk about let, let's talk about a couple more additions here and then we'll move on from the Bengals. uh geno stone Safety mm -hmm. moving from the Ravens to the Bengals. Uh, for me, I think it's a solid move. Like I, I think it's I think it's a direct comparable with us and Juan Thornhill. Like, yeah, solid player fills a role. 
does a good job, doesn't, excuse me, have any uh, particular weaknesses. Uh, so, I mean... I, I, it's a solid move, I guess. It, it's it's not like the biggest needle move mover though, yeah. mm-hmm. you know. So like that that's my only like, uh, you know, I guess uh, rebuttal to this move. And it, it I I gotta say because this I will also lump in this signing. Uh, it's not the other one I wanted to talk about, but Von Bell coming mm-hmm. back. I don't get it when you consider. Oh my gosh, I forgot the guy's name. The guy that they drafted, that yeah, Dax Hill, yeah. Like I don't get why you're bringing in two safeties, paying them six million a year for one year, and then seven point five million over two years when you have Dax Hill. That that doesn't make sense to me, unless they want to make Dax Hill a corner. Which yeah, that's I. If that's what they're doing, and he's gonna be their second corner, I'm assuming because they have Cam Taylor Britt. Uh, then Jerry Judy, you're going to have a, two career games. I promise you, pal. You're going to have two career games. It's Don't think I – oh, God. I got to stop myself because this is – let's go back. <laughs> Gino Stone, and I guess we can throw Von Bell in that conversation, yeah. Derek. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think for the Bengals, Dax Hill I don't think is a safety. I, I just don't think he can play safety in the NFL. I think him as a slot corner is really like the only role I think he can play. Maybe I'm wrong for saying that, but, you know, Von Bell coming back, okay, whatever. Like that's – it's not a big deal. And honestly, with the safeties that were on the market, I would not have done that. I would have signed somebody, Jeremy Chin – uh, one of those types of players, Jordan Fuller, one of those types of players you could have gotten, but whatever. Um, you know, and then with, uh, with Geno Stone, I, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say it's not a needle mover. <laughs> like, that's exactly what I was going to say. I think he's a fine player. I think he's okay. Um, I think the Thornhill comparison is good, but the difference is our secondary was stacked and Thornhill was just like a not a difference maker. He's just going to play his role. You know, for the Bengals, I think they have major holes all over that defense now. And, you know, I think you're asking him to be better than he is maybe, but all in all, I think, you know, we talked before the pod, but Bengals have had a rough, rough off season. It has not been pretty, but yeah, Geno Stone does nothing for me. For the most part, I think it's a fine signing. But Von Bell, he had better options out there. They must just like him a lot. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, let, let's let's talk about their biggest move when we think about incoming free agent. Uh, and that's Sheldon Rankins. Uh, they brought him in on a two-year, $26 million deal. Um, For me, I, so let me, let me say, start this, right? I did mention Sheldon Rankins as a player I wanted to bring here to Cleveland as a Brown. I'm not going to refute that. He's a good player. Mm -hmm. Um, But for his age, getting a two-year, $26 million deal, for me, that's an overpay. Uh, I think that I would have wanted him like on a one-year, like $8 million is what I was searching for for us. Um, Two years, $13 million. I mean, listen, he's a good player. He's not going to be replacing DJ Reader um, because DJ Reader was a monster in the run game. Uh, And I know BJ Hill is too. And so, you know, maybe you don't mind another pass rushing D tackle. But I mean, I I just, I just don't really think that this, I, I don't, I don't see how this deal with, especially when you count in the fact that they're losing DJ Reader, mm-hmm. I don't think it makes up for that. That that's what I'm trying to say here. Mm-hmm. Uh, struggling to say, but I'm <laughs> saying it now. Uh, <laughs> like I don't think it makes up for that, especially when you think about the pass rushers they have. Trey Hendrickson is an animal. I love Trey Hendrickson. I was very skeptical when they first got him. He's flourished into a stud there. Um, and then you got Sam Hubbard on the other side, who I think is very solid. Uh, second edge i think he doesn't get enough love uh from the national media i think he's a good player 
I didn't think that the pass rush was where they needed to upgrade the most. Especially when you consider that two, historically I should say, uh, over the past three or four years, two of the teams in your division are top five in rushing every year. You know, last year was difficult for the Browns, but also we had a ton of injuries, including a running back. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I don't think that this was that great of a move. And, oh, also, I think the Steelers are going to be more moving more into a run first style of offense. Uh, I think that's what, uh, you know, the the signing of God, I can't, Arthur Smith. Uh, this is a bad name day for me, guys. I apologize. <laughs> but Arthur Smith, I think that's what that signifies. So I feel I think that if you were going to give Sheldon Rankins two years, 26 million, you really couldn't bring back DJ reader. Mm -hmm. Like you really couldn't do that. Like solidify the run. Like if teams can't run on you, right. You know, you've won half the battle, <laughs> you know, like I, I just, it was, it do, it's not a good fit for me. That's what I'm yeah. trying to say, but Derek, I'm going to stop stuttering and let <laughs> you go. Cause uh, I'm, I'm having a rough one right yeah. now. <laughs> um, I'll, again, I'll keep it quick with this one as well. I think Sheldon Rankins is a is a fine player. I think he's a fine player. Um, I think he's he's a good player, but I think there are some guys in the league that you have to have help around them. And if this was a move that they made to the point you just said, of if they re-signed DJ Reader and then signed him to like a one year, eight million, I'd be like, okay, that's a good deal. I I understand what they're doing there. But to let Reader walk and go to Detroit, which, by the way, hell yeah, Detroit, good shit. That is awesome. Um, Incredible move for them. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. But, um, you know, if they were to re-sign Reader and then bring him in as well with him, I would 100% get it. But giving him the money you did and then letting Reader go makes no sense to me. I'll say it once. I've said it once. I'll say it again. Bengals, you can run all over them. I think this this season you're going to be able to run all over them if you would like cuz there's not really unless they trade for somebody because there's not really a guy in the draft that you draft day one plug and play and he's incredible. I mean not that we know of currently, but you know, if they go out and they uh, draft Tavondre Sweat or somebody like that, I think a guy that you're going to start and expect him to fill DJ Reader's shoes. Like, that's just, it's not happening. So, I agree with no. you completely. I don't understand it. It makes no sense to me. And especially given the additions and, you know, the rest of the AFC North. It makes no sense. Yeah, and just to kind of jump off your point here on the draft, like, they've already got a draft to replace receiver. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't believe they're bringing back Tyler Boyd. I mean, it's possible they might. But, I mean, they're not bringing back T. Higgins unless if they give him a crazy amount of money um, that I don't think that they're willing to do. You know, Mike Brown proved me wrong. Um, you know, although I hope you don't. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, they, they got to draft receivers here. Like, they, they, they have other needs that they've got to draft for. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I, I'm with you. I didn't agree with that. But let's move on from Cincy. Cincy.